Hey there, fellow Haunted Ones, I am Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis, and today's episode is uh, going to be about uh, conceiving warrior concepts, and that takes more than a mommy and a daddy who love each other. It usually takes a tragic event. So let's talk about warrior concepts on WebDM. This episode is sponsored by Dungeon Fog, the online map maker and authoring tool for game masters. Save yourself hours of time, generate awesome maps of buildings, rooms, dungeons, and more with GM notes and share, print, or export them with just a few clicks. There are thousands of ways to customize your maps and they're adding more all the time. Their text tools just got a makeover so you can add labels, legends, and text in tons of styles to fit your campaign. There's free, on-demand, and subscription access options, so go make a map with Dungeon Fog today. Link in the comments and description. And you'll get 10% off your annual subscription on us. Okay, Jim, so we had someone ask us, uh, ask us to do this, so we're doing this. Well, let's talk about character concepts uh, for warriors. We've done shows like on the classes, like the mechanics. We've done shows okay. on role-playing these things sure. like how to actually role play them but as far as just concepts like yeah the conception of your warrior what does it mean to be a warrior like why right. like a decemberist joke two shows in a row why we fight <laughs> like why do why do we why be a warrior right um yes. and this is why we're gonna we're gonna talk yeah. about it today right absolutely absolutely i love warriors Many D and D players, long term D and D players, I gravitated towards magic users fairly early um, because they seemed complex. They seemed like they had a lot to offer. It's like, oh god, I get to do these. I have these powers, right? I have these spells, and I think I failed to appreciate the simplicity that was the the fighter uh, in TSR era D and D. The fact that they're just this chassis for you to build whatever sort of character you want on it they're tough they're durable they they survive they're action oriented you know and and i think i kind of carried this view with me through every fantasy role playing game i had where i was like the the caster is superior to the warrior because of the things that they can do and mm -hmm. as i continued playing rpgs and dming and and playing when i could like i've really come to reverse that and i find the magic user type to be kind of like Eh, like, ah, all right. And this sort of blank canvas, this lump of clay that is the warrior that can be so many things and so many mm -hmm. concepts and, and, you know, mechanical expressions, depending on the game, that, like, I, I, I'm not, I can't get enough. I find I cannot get enough. And, like, just pure warriors, just the most bread and butter, like, mm -hmm. give them to me. I love them. I absolutely yeah, adore I mean them. For me, uh, I, obviously, I mean, you were you were there. You came in on the the first campaign I played in, but I started with an elven fighter. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously coming off reading the Driss novels, I wanted to. <laughs> I was like, I want to fight. I want an elf that fights with two swords, and that's a very right. common thing uh, as far as yeah. uh, as far as warriors <laughs> go. Um, but but also, uh, what I found in my uh, original campaign playing. And this is more attributed to the to the addition and era, um, but you you are you are made by your magic items, but the fact yeah. that you're a warrior allows you to accumulate a lot of them because you can survive all those fights <laughs> in order to get to the part where everybody picks. Yeah, <laughs> and so you know, like I ended with a figurine of wondrous power and badass swords and this awesome armor, and I had a cloak that could do a yeah. thing and a boots that could do a thing, and like. In that era, like I had a weapon, even though I did have my two weapons, but I had something for many occasions. I had a ring of the ram. I had a horn right. that could do a thing, right? And so, yeah. like being an being a that badass fighter, being that 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 jack of all trades that comes about because <laughs> you go out and quest and survive and accumulate this these these magical this magical wealth around yeah. you. Uh, yeah. like that, that was such an amazing experience for me. Um, and it yeah. really did shape how I made my characters moving forward for a time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause 
I, I think I, I think when I think fighter, I think they 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 fit comfortably within the warrior archetype. But you could just as easily be talking about like monks and 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 barbarians or paladin types, like space marines, secret agents, like anyone mm-hmm. who's like action oriented and and um, is otherwise relying on just sort of their skill and training and a little bit of sort of magical assistance, maybe because I do think there's a place for magic uh, in warriors, but like. The big thing that that strikes me across any archetype, any any concept, right, is just a, a person that's larger than life, right? Like mm-hmm. some of the I- iconic warriors that I can think of. That's that's one of their number one qualities. Just like they fill up a room with their being, <laughs> you know. They're even if they're sort of sulking and brooding and the like, they they still have a presence to them and a way of approaching like the way they live that that's that feels very larger than life and i find it's a cool way to like express a uh my you know your warriorness uh i've, mm-hmm. I've got a fighter now uh, in pendragon one of my, my my second character the the son of my first character um is just like <laughs> he's known for his lustiness his valor his generosity his honestness like he just loves life loves to mm-hmm. fight loves to show off Loves to loves the contest of arms, right? It favors strength and action, sometimes to his detriment, right? But he's just someone that's like doesn't hold back in whatever they do, right? Mm-hmm. Like they, there's there's nothing, <laughs> there's no reins on this guy, and or I think of something like Conan, right? The sort yeah. of the broodingness, the pantherish, uh, uh, you know, prowling the. The, the strength and kind of cunning of Conan, all of that speaks to someone that's just more here than others, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so I like to, th- I like to consider that for my warrior characters. I like to think, how do they like relish the life they live? How do they, they approach what they have with gusto? Um, Cause I also love the little moments in role playing. I like to know what my characters eat. I like to know where mm-hmm. they're camping. <laughs> what annoyed them on the road that day <laughs> oh yeah definitely um uh, yeah, yeah like and, and the thing is is when you're when when coming up with concepts like the, the, there's no end to places to pull from i mean with books yeah. and tv movies comics like there are so many concepts that you can pull from like when you talk about larger than life like we talked about this before, but like uh, Guts from Berserk, the Golden sure. uh, Age. I forgot what the, the trilogy is called, but it's a trilogy of movies that uh, yeah. of anime movies. But I mean, he's literally just uh, he's been literally just a, like a fighter, you know, even though he says Berserk, he's just a fighter <laughs> that like fights with a two handed sword. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, at one point, like he kills like 100 dudes like in a fight <laughs> because he just refuses to die because he refuses right. to to give up and just like all he wants to do is fight. And no. And it's and the thing is, is in the story that is part of it. It's like, why do you just want to fight? And like and he's just he does. That is who yeah. he is. Like it is the expression right. of himself uh, <laughs> to never give in. And because of that, he achieves these great things. But there's. Nothing special about him other sure. than, you know, never says He's die. never going to back down. Determination yeah. and never going to back down. That Those are kind of defining features to me of, of being a warrior of like the will to just keep mm-hmm. going or the, you know, and, and when I think of like historical examples I can think of or, or very sort of like literary or pop culture examples I can think of, it's that just get not i'm i'm not gonna back down i am i i want this thing or or i'm gonna see this thing through to the end like it that you, i'm not gonna be the one to leave and i think that that's mm-hmm. where you can really emphasize the heroicness of your warriors and and like especially the ones that i'm trying to like <laughs> uh, embody myself and a lot of the warriors that i play is like where does that come from is it like a I, I'm not going to back down because I'm. There is no limit to what I will do to stay in this fight. Or is it like an honor and principle thing? So like mm-hmm. I'm not backing down because I've sworn an oath. My my honor is on the line if I back down. And there's probably times when I would be, be better off if I backed down. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, going back to my uh, my pin dragon character that I'm playing right now, one of the things I love about him is like some of his virtues are so high. 
like he's so known for his valorous it's, it ranks so high on uh, as a game stat that i can't back down like it, it, my character will not despite like being surrounded by enemies who are going to kill him not going to back down you know mm-hmm. in in grave peril of their life not backing down you know facing off against supernatural threat he has no business facing off against not going to back down and like that says something about those characters and i like like what is like if that's what they're like when it's life or death what are they like just in their life <laughs> you know mm-hmm. <laughs> what's it like to be them <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean that's 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 the other that's the other thing about like conceptualizing these people cuz like uh you know maybe in out of combat they're just very somber and quiet sure. you know it's yeah. it's like when like when you hear about like very boisterous people like comedians or like robin williams it's like was he like that at home it's like no he's quiet you know whatever sure. cuz that wasn't the stage that he shines on Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you could play your warrior that they seek combat because that's where they find their true self. You know, the the, the actual yeah. person. And in between combats, it's like, well, I have to eat to make sure I'm at my at my best to show my true self. Right. You could. Yeah. Everything is in service to uh, getting better at your craft. Like uh, mm-hmm. you, you think mm-hmm. more of um, like samurai. Like where sure. their 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 whole being is about being in the moment and oneness and and you know taking calligraphy because it's a way to to uh, an extension of the hand and and mm. it's teaching the sword without teaching the sword and sure. things like that like I I love digging down uh, to fighters like this because you know at the at the end of the day you know when you when all you have is your your sword to to yeah. paint your legend with. Um, I, I don't know what it, it to me that gets to be the most human right mm. like because <laughs> that i think about my ancestors and what they went through and sure. they didn't really, they really didn't have magic probably or, or you know <laughs> they, they got by by the by their grit and their will and uh having a sharp blade or something you know yeah um, i think in a lot of fantasy worlds that's going to be the case and and like there's oh man so there's a lot you mentioned that i that i want to make sure we come back to but one of the ones to stick with is like the the other side of that life balance for those that that put their lives on the line and are warriors and like is that is there a way that they approach their life and and integrate it into who they are as a as a warrior as someone that engages in violent action like do they balance that with something else? Is it is it sort of more civilized pursuits, uh, more genteel pursuits, as you might say, like uh, whether it's the calligraphy or or uh, cultivating, uh, you know, flowers and gardens and the like, like that balance is a good way to juxtapose sort of concepts and in, in characters. And I really kind of like the chivalric sort of ideal the, the as that you know expresses itself of like on the one hand we have this steel clad <laughs> trained from birth riding this animal that's been specifically bred to do that mm-hmm. for this rider that also has a social socially superior position to most of the people that they're fighting and has just barely thinks of them as people and like at the same time we don't want that person just walking around the place doing whatever they want so you have to like civilize dress them up in these fancy clothes tell them that they have to do all these things like bow and 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 you know say these certain you know forms of address to to people in their social hierarchy that this is how they should treat uh uh, you know their women their children the, the other people they have like they're trying to grapple with that contradiction of here's someone we ask to commit violence societally speaking at the broadest level we also have to live with them <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, you know they're going to be in charge we don't want them just doing whatever they want that's a bad idea <laughs> yeah but i mean uh yeah, yeah. but yeah like be, you, but what i love about that is much like the weapons they wield they have to be molded properly otherwise right. they become unwieldy uh-huh. and so if you have a bad sword you're just as likely to hurt yourself as the person that you're attacking so yeah. you want to wield the wielder in its uh-huh. you know in a way in order to use them properly and like so right. thinking about that from what's both, the riddle of steel like a, it, that is the riddle <laughs> of steel is it not right, right. <laughs> yeah um, no, i i love that i love this. and so when i think about it in terms of magic in a fantasy world i think of things like like 
if if you're if you're training warriors, right? Like if if you're part of some whatever it is, like why is it just like a, a mortal tutor or something, right? Like why aren't you part of a a fighting school that like the ghosts of former masters are there to to mm-hmm. train you and to and to just develop the person, you know, in, into a someone who not only can wield the blade but like has the wisdom to know when to. Right. I, mm-hmm. I think that's the big warrior kind of paradox is like you've got someone who's action oriented They're They've they've uh, hardened themselves to the peril of combat. They're willing to take a life they have in the past. And like you also can turn them into like not just psychopathic killers and having yeah. that institutional like, OK, okay I've got ghosts that do this. I've got celestials that, <laughs> that train mm-hmm. or oversee this. Right. Or the or the opposite of right. right? Like infernal or fiendish, uh, uh, you know, instructors that are like, no, we're going to bring the worst out in you. Yeah. Right. You know, you're a warrior that's been trained to just completely remove your sense of compassion and empathy and hesitation to uh, to violence and like. Yeah, we didn't really care about the side effects of that. <laughs> We're just, you know, that is just a consequence. Um, I think that could be a really cool character to play too, like to grapple with that. Oh, oh, most definitely. Uh, um, I I love the idea of a character who, you know, they are so bound by uh, their their training. You know, you you never draw your blade unless blood and like if you draw your blade blood must be spilled sure. like un- understanding that concept so like if they accidentally like i pull my sword out just to scare you it's like well before they put it in you see them run it across their arm and red yeah. swell up and then they sheath their sword because <laughs> they understand and you know and how many marks you have base is, sure. is how reckless that that warrior is um like I love, like I've always wanted to play that kind of concept where they're not like you know mm. like a cutter or anything like that, but it's just like, no, I you have to. That's a lesson to be learned. You drew your sword when it wasn't time, and was you know time. you scared yeah. some people, and so yeah. you gotta. There is a penance for uh, for that, and so um, I, I don't I don't know. That's that's just always been a concept that's kind of rattling around in the old brain cage. Uh, yeah, but uh, I do love the idea of like like. Uh, the 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 idea of like you have a, a series of weapons at the school where there are no masters because the masters are imbued in the weapons and yeah. so you show yeah. up and you are trained by the weapon you are using internally you try to mm-hmm. leave it and it's just a normal sword but in that place right. you had masters of the long sword of the spear of the hammer and they have they will attune themselves to a weapon in that dojo or or whatever and yeah. like you are literally like there's no out loud like there's no talking aloud it's just students learning from their weapons like to me right. oh my god I, that's going to be the backstory of my next fighter you know um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I i think it's really cool and there's a lot of different ways um uh, to sort of take it I, one of the things that i'm kind of thinking of is is so in a lot of fantasy worlds magic has a a, a bodily movement component to it right postures and and hand gestures and things like that and i it occurs to me that like that could easily be like some sort of uh, you know weapon practice regimen or something as well what if the very uh way that your you know that your your warrior wields their axe or their or you know or their hammer or something like that whatever weapon that they've got the way they shoot their bow like what if the very motion and movement of that is imbued with magic in the same way that a spell is imbued with magic through its gestures that it unlocks it, it they align themselves with some portion of the universe that magic exists in and can bring it into their portion and and i think a lot of times when we're thinking of like magic and warriors and the like it's easy to separate them out but for me i'm like man i want to i want to mix them up i want to confuse the shit out of where the mundane skills Mm -hmm. and techniques and the magic is because like i want a warrior that is like they they have magic they are clearly supernatural but it is not from a source or a or, or 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 a power or something it's just because they're badass right like they're Mm -hmm. just good enough they're just (laughs) that's who they are right and that's gets me thinking about like 
you know, stories of, of mythological figures that like swim oceans and fight sea serpents and, you know, that, 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 you know, tackle the worst that nature has to throw at them, that travel to the underworld to rescue loved mm -hmm. ones. They're just people other, you know, they just, what they do is supernatural. What they do yeah. is magical. That's what I oh, love that part. Yeah, no, I love that. It's because it's either that or they had a really cool bard traveling with them that uh... <laughs> right <laughs> to like hype them up. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, like hey, you know, like a night, like in a Knight's Tale with Chaucer and <laughs> sure. like you know. I, I like that. Though. Like, first off, that's a great story of a fighter in there, and then the rest of the party member uh, around love a Knight's Tale, um, but like it brings up the the reputation part of, of mm -hmm. being a warrior right like the idea that your reputation how others perceive you how you uh you know your, your deeds your character how you behave like that that matters and that yeah. that aligns with like concepts of honor and and of being an honorable warrior because it's like all right are you known to adhere to the norms of how we fight <laughs> you know are you willing to like be disciplined and accept your place in society like that's essentially what your honor is right like how well do you conform to these things dishonorable warrior means something different in each sort of cultural context yeah. but like for your fantasy characters it could be like no magic it could be magic's perfectly fine because there's no difference I, you know the, the possibilities are endless with it but that idea of like a, a code or a some some way to like gauge how others see you like i love the yeah. idea of a society of warriors wandering the roads fighting mm -hmm. monsters and and like bragging at, to each other at, at taverns and crossroads about their exploits and you know, it's just, it just screams D and D and fantasy role playing to me, right? <laughs> oh, you know, I I think about uh, what was it like in the Renaissance, uh, like in like in uh, uh, I don't know, like Venice or whatever. You have a bunch of people running around with rapiers, dueling each other, <laughs> and trying to be the most renowned yeah. warrior, but right. out in the wilds. Like you have that same kind of mentality, but it's not cooped up in 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 cities. It is, yeah. it, it is just, it is ubiquitous. And I love the idea of like, and for some people, like maybe they, the word honor and being honor bound doesn't, doesn't sit well. Well, you just change it to like, well, do you want to be famous or do you want to be infamous? Like, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. do you want to build your name on a way that like people go, oh yeah, they're really cool. Or it's just like, oh yeah, they've killed a lot of people. Uh, but just watch when you fight them because they'll throw sand in your face, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, your reput I mean, your reputation either way, I, I think, is a big component of honor. But thinking of it in terms of, if, if it, you know, fame and infamy uh, is is a good way. Like, a third component of that would be, like, your own self-image as well. Honor is a yeah. weird concept to define, but it's very prevalent amongst, you know, uh, warrior cultures. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think like, that's why I think it's fun to, to play around with and think about because, you know, what's honorable for you know uh, what you know people in your setting or, or for, you know my own is different across the context right so like when i think of the dueling culture of students in in some of my uh, urban uh, settings that i've had um the idea that that students and the like settle duels no matter who they are they could be wizards apprentices they could be you know artisans like they resolve it with knife fights and rape your duels in back alleys like there's a culture surrounding that and, and whether or not you're you know one of them is honorable for it whether or not one of them fights fair matters you know it it, it uh it plays into things outside of that back alley and i think even in uh even when i think of character concepts that are they're like i'm not like my profession isn't warrior but i you know i behave as you know role played as one right of someone that that's action oriented and willing to put themselves in danger like like i kind of i don't know i like like the idea that they're that i'm able to kind of see who they are through these moments of like oh they're about to get in a fight this could be it right like what is it what is it like when they have to put their life on the line uh what is it like when when that situation comes on them and they didn't seek it out you know i think that's why i like games where combat's really deadly because <laughs> it oh, makes you definitely. it forces you to think about those kind of things 
Yeah, it does. Uh, but uh, but to me, um, when those moments happen, if you have a clear concept and your guy and your 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 warrior is someone who, you know, they they don't they know they don't have a towel to throw in. That's not a thing. Mm -hmm. um, when that moment comes upon you, it doesn't matter. It's like any other challenge. You go through it, and yeah. so. Like I like I don't play all of my fighters that way, but currently, like in um, playing in a, a Legend of the Five Rings game, and uh -huh. our, our Patreon people will know because uh, I talk about it all the time. Which, by the way, if you go on over to our Patreon and sign up, you, we got like over 175 podcasts. There's plenty of stuff of us talking about our games and and everything oh, yeah. like that. So uh, just much check it more out. of this kind of conversations too. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Um, but in Legend of the Five Rings, uh, Kobayashi, um, he was a butcher. Like, literally, he was a butcher. And because he yeah. was really good at his thing, this group of, of the Blades sought him out because they were like, we need an executioner. We need someone who knows the deadly strokes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. how to kill in a, in, in a way outside the sword because this is the way they train people. They find skills outside of warriors and then they train them to fight. But mm -hmm. keeping in mind that, and so that's the thing is, he he doesn't look to fight people. He looks to kill them in the first strike because he is a butcher, and that is sure. the thing is he doesn't see you as an opponent. He sees you as some something to be removed, and then he can go on through you. And so yeah. th to this to this day, he's only been beaten once. But again, that was by a really badass Iron Monk. But anyway, <laughs> um, but other than that, for the most part, it 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 the the the. The way I built the character allowed me to play that concept that because I wanted yeah. to play that samurai that draws his sword, makes one swipe, and in one moment, in one motion, resheathes his sword and continues on his day. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I, I I do love the idea of the warrior that's very like matter of fact, professional. You know that that this is not about like you know getting impassioned or like you know something like that it's not about zeal and fervor it's just like precision you know almost like a hyper rational style you know mm -hmm. and I, what i think of like amping that up i i love the idea of the concept of someone that like plays the fight in their head at, before it's going to go down right like all right i'm oh, like sizing Sherlock this Holmes. person up yeah. yeah like i know what they're going to do i know <laughs> i know where they're going to strike first i i can tell you know and like it's those honed instincts perhaps like mm -hmm. like i was saying earlier like they, that have surpassed the mortal <laughs> uh, capacity for what we otherwise be able to do and like especially when it incorporates like brains and brawn Right, like I have a hard time imagining warriors that I play as stupid or dim-witted or slow on the uptake because it's like, how in the mm -hmm. world did they become warriors? In the like, if they weren't quick-witted and able to like, you know, assess a situation quickly and survive. And so I, I usually like to have a balance between, say, you know, my mental mental statistics and my physical ones when I play, because I like having both those options open. I like someone that's like thinks about what's about to happen right that's like all right mm -hmm. i remember this is though this is this gambit or this ruse or I, you know this has happened before i've studied this technique and you know you can't yeah. you can't beat me you know like i've already oh, won yeah, dude. <laughs> oh dude that's i hey man i, I grew up listening to the wu-tang and watching old samurai flicks a game of a game of chess is like a sword fight you must think first before you move right, and, right. like and or like uh, the movie Hero has an amazing scene of what you're describing. Uh, it's at the at the game club where they're playing whatever game that is that they play with the stones. I don't know what it's called. I mean, I've only seen that movie once. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I believe it's I believe it's Donnie Yen is this is the spear wielder Sky. Uh, okay. And yeah. Jet Li's character, nameless one, is there as a prefect, like uh, to bring him into justice. And you see this whole sword fight, and you realize it finally cuts back to them, and this is all taking place in their heads as they look For at sure. each other and size each other up. They are having a fight in their head, and when it comes to the actual blows, that is there's literally only one sword stroke because they've already played it out and they know how it will end so they skip to the end but you still get to see the yeah, fight forgot that that's that's fun i forgot that part i like yeah. taking that and going like okay i'm 
I'm a warrior in in you know fantasy world, but like I've I've taken that analytical. We've we've fought this fight in our heads to such a such a degree that I've become like psychic, and can impose my vision of how I think it goes down on my opponent's mind and like mm-hmm. cause them to act in ways that I think they ought to act as we fight. Like subtly, I think of a mm-hmm. warrior that's like that that has that much will and and determination that they can like alter reality uh, around them where they've they've practiced some technique or something that it's like all right i'm fighting you not just physically but like metaphysically mentally mm-hmm. you know like i i love that idea i love the idea of a of a fight in a fantasy world that you could see in different dimensions that like if you were a cosmic being or something watching you'd see like okay this fight's taking place on the material plane and the astral plane right like Mm -hmm. it has multiple expressions across the multiverse and like uh, (laughs) just like what kind of uh you know what kind of warrior culture comes out of that style of fighting and like Mm -hmm. I, i don't know i just the the merging of all of it together is what really uh what really lights my fires when I think about it. <laughs> oh, lo- most definitely because uh, the the relation of of um, actual magic, game mechanic magic uh, versus yeah. you know j- just the byproduct of just being so awesome. You know, because you're a champion fighter with a 19 through 20, like they always just kill yeah. people. I don't understand sure. it. Uh, I have a lot but of that, fun with champions. <laughs> but that crossroads, so where you're talking about, you know, maybe an Eldritch Knight versus a champion, where they, they sure. have a little something extra. Like, that doesn't, you don't have to, that doesn't have to be actual, like, mechanics. You can just, you can just conceive of your character that, yeah, they have these things, but in actual play, um, it doesn't look the same. Yeah. It's just, uh, it is aesthetics the same. Yeah, are different. The- the aesthetics, the reskin, you know, taking mechanics. I, I, I really uh, like this expression as it goes in Pendragon. Um, surprise, surprise uh, for anybody who's been <laughs> following what games I play recently. Because Pendragon, everybody's a knight, right? You're all warriors. And it's up to how you play them, the decisions you make about uh, about how you you know approach the various situations of the game that you have to differentiate yourself because you probably all have sword skills. I know I do. Our my fellow player knights, we all have sword skills that are about the same. You know, riding skills, lance skills, and the like. It's in the other things that we're different. You know, whether we're good at hunting or intrigue or courtesy or the like. But the magic sort of comes out in in what our characters are passionate about. Because when you invoke a passion, you say, like, I'm going to choose to, like, fight for this, fight for my honor, fight for the love of, of uh, you know, someone that I adore from afar or something, or my, the love of my family, the honor of my uh, my liege lord. It, like, gives you these game mechanic bonuses that let you do superhuman things. Like, there's no way you'd be able to accomplish the things you accomplish with your normal modifiers. And so I kind of like the way of integrating that, where nobody's calling on any power or spell or anything like that it's just a quality of the genre that expresses Mm -hmm. itself through it so you i have a knight who like rides through the enemy like butter just crit after crit after crit uh, on lance and sword attacks and is like the last one standing as he stands above his liege lord who's fallen and defeated the enemy bodyguard and broken three shields and like having that just be you know even though it's just a, a bonus on a die right it's just it's it's no power no no narrative control you know that 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 comes in from the mechanical side but it's just like i had a bonus that otherwise i wouldn't get to do the kind of things that i got to do there but like Mm -hmm. how i conceived of it and what it meant to me was like beyond this plus 10 you get for something because to me it's like that's superhuman no one else did that (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. when i think of a warrior that's what it is like this is the only one that's done that right like how do you fight a big giant as a person? Like they're fucking huge, right? Yeah. Like how do you even get somewhere where you can strike something vital enough to kill? <laughs> you know what I well, mean? You, <laughs> Somebody uh, had we're, to. We're all meat puppets, and you got to start cutting the strings. <laughs> basically, <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, 
but uh, that's how you but do yeah, it. like kind of kind of moving in like into that like conceiving of your warrior as someone who is an expert not just at killing but can killing specific things like yeah. like actually having having that knowledge from fighting for so long of like right. how to take down certain things um i mean you don't necessarily just have to be a monster like a ranger monster hunter um that can come across i mean and it can come across as something as simple as like well i'm a i'm a i'm some kind of warrior type but yeah i took survival and arcana because like sure i know the beasts of the wild and the magical creatures of the wild and how they interact and so like these are just cons these are ways to conceive uh again and this kind of goes back to what you're saying like warriors usually like the really good ones are pretty intelligent I mean, you sure. can play a mindless, you know, like I like when I think of like just a mighty mindless fighter more than more often than not, I'm thinking of a barbarian. And I, I can yeah, kind of I mean, see that, that, that kind where, of a concept. Yeah. Where that yeah. that comes from that well of rage and, and emotion versus like a fighter who just they just know. Like they know yeah. how to strike with the sword, where to strike, you know, they know to flip that sword around and double hand it to stab because they're wearing full plate. You got to get in between sure. the creases. And right. so like, so thinking of your fighters, um, as something more than just, well, they can, they can hold this big weapon and take a, and take more hits than most, um, you know, yeah. like. That, that, I think that's, you know, it's kind of getting down to what we're discussing here today. Of, oh, of, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially as it relates to, like, fantastic, uh, you know, combat, fighting monsters, fighting, you know, magic users and things like that. It's easy to think of, like, warriors amongst themselves, you know. But for me, like, someone that's just a trained fighter, just or maybe not even trained like maybe if i'm playing a barbarian type someone who gets their their ability to to fight and their determination to to stay in the fight from just like their life you know like this, they just live a life that <laughs> makes them inured to hardship and violence you know they, that that they have to be good with weapons to survive uh versus ones that are more schooled or or you know sought out some more formal training like this the, both of them are still just normal people even if they are tapping into something magical against these fantastic threats and to me that like really says something and really like makes the concepts that i can think of mean something to me because they didn't need any justification to be there to fight these things that are fantastical other than like i i've got to be here i have to oppose mm -hmm. this not destined to not not like have the power that's needed to do it or just like i'm here to do something um you know just just try to stop me and that's a real i don't know to me that, that's a real solid foundation for a lot of concepts for me because mm -hmm. i i like the heroic aspect of that i like the 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 the, the heroic figure that they says you know what I don't it doesn't matter don't tell me how dangerous it is i i don't care like i what how am i going to defeat this giant monster I'm probably going to have to go down its throat and get it from the inside. Like a, a monster hunter that is that accounts for the, the ways in which these giant creatures or magical monsters or whatever can mess with them, right? Like, like if they wear mirrored plate to help just in whatever small way to reflect, you know, for spells to reflect off of it, or if their armor is sort of covered in barbs and 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 uh, you know blades and things, just because it's like, yeah, I do not want monsters picking me up, right? Like I, <laughs> it's good. I want it to hurt for them, even as they're crushing me to death. Um, you know, in many ways, I think like the you know the more I dwell on those kinds of concepts, they don't really look like much of anything that that fantasy art or the aesthetic is based on they look more like just like trench fighters and and you know pit gladiators and things you know like that with like big spiked brass knuckles and big heavy chopping swords and barbed chains and you know just as soon you know tie someone down and chop them up than fight fair just like a down and dirty fighter it's just like i'm oh, the yeah. little guy I'm fighting dragons over here with just a weapon, you know, <laughs> but I'm going to do oh, it. Yeah. Stop me. I dare you. <laughs> yeah. Never. Um, 
never shy away from the opportunity to uh, play a character that fights dirty because yeah. there is no rule that says you have to. That is, that is right. to me, that's only imposed by the type of character you want to play. <laughs> and like in my, in my current sci-fi game at home, like uh, one of our players, JJ, that's, that's his focus is fights mm. dirty. And so the yeah. first thing he's always doing is like, they have a weakness. They have anything I can exploit. Cause he just yeah. gets that for free at the beginning of the fight. And I'm like, yeah, he's got, they, they have this. You, you obviously see when they take a step, there's an extra hinge joint there. Yeah. It seems like an overly complicated system of, of, of modality. And so, yeah, he'll <laughs> go for the legs, you know, he'll sweep the leg, Johnny. And, 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 and being able to, to play that through and just being like, well, it's, this is how you survive. Like, yeah. there, there is nothing wrong with fighting dirty, throwing sand in the eye. It's like coming up with every different way to to get an advantage. Yeah. Who cares? Like how you if you if you survive to tell the tale, you can tell whatever tale you want, you know? Sure. Yeah. You can say what you can say whatever you want. Yeah. I fighting dirty, especially against like creatures that are that are more powerful than you or that can overpower you or, or against opponents that can, you know, if you're fighting like a wizard or some sort of caster that can bend reality to their will then you there's you know there's not a lot of of uh of room for honor there like you've got to hit them hard and fast and so like playing a character that thinks that way my my most recent uh, uh character in dark eye was very much like that um dark eye is a game where penalties and light can add up pretty quickly you get wounds and pain and and i deliberately took some disadvantages that would make those worse because it was more to challenge myself uh from a, a role play perspective um but like at the end of the day my guy cared nothing about honor uh he was a freedom fighter from his homeland who you know learned how to fight uh, as she was trying to like drive out the evil hordes that had occupied it and now it's like well i can't really go anywhere else because all i know how to do is fight so i'm just going to wander around and fight um but his but his approach to it wasn't like honorable his approach was somebody's trying to fight me then i have to kill them first Right. Like, mm -hmm. I don't run. If they're going to get me, I'm going to go straight towards them as soon as I know. Right. Like, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to fight honorably. You know, I'm going to fight directly. But if I can get an advantage, if we can find some way to, to take something from them they might need or or to undermine them in some way before we can get to them, like if we can fight them before they get to us that combat is war mentality, right? Of yeah. like poison their well, burn their fields, send in the dogs, that kind of thing. Then like, I, I find that very satisfying because I also find it satisfying to like, think of who that person is outside of those moments. Like, right. Like, um, I remember my, uh, my drow, uh, uh, rogue in the first spell jammer game you ran where it just, mm -hmm. I think by the way that I, portrayed him in combat and otherwise was like he was his most honest and open in combat and and it was outside of that it was incredibly paranoid you know not going to talk to anybody not going to reveal too much because it was these moments of danger and peril that like outside of the the adrenaline rush of it it's like i can't no people could sneak up on me in the middle of the night i have to sleep in an anti-magic field right like i have to it's, it's my choice i have to have a whole ship to myself that, that's trailed behind the others because that's the only way I'm going to be safe from my enemies, you know, and it's only when he's distracted by combat that it all kind of comes out. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's fun to sort of play someone who's action oriented and like puts himself on the line and, and faces danger, but then like mm -hmm. has to go home and do other things. They're not always doing that, you know? So yeah. I try to think of that and what my characters are like when they're not fighting, you know, how do they live their life? Oh, most Oh, most definitely. I mean, uh, in a in a game that we're we're just now kind of discussing playing, uh, I want to play uh, a bard, College of Swords, yeah. so a warrior of a sorts, uh, and certainly, and the way I want to portray him is is the fact that I'm like, well, what does he do? And I'm like, well, he's an author, he writes fiction, except in in the same way that. Um, and the Western escapes me where there's a, uh, uh, oh, uh, Unforgiven, 
where there's a, a gunslinger who writes stories about himself, but they're all overblown and, and, and crap, you know, his own like, hype man. literally the same, same thing. Like he's his own hype man, but he doesn't write about himself in, in, with the same name, but he goes uh-huh. out and he does these adventures and he's a bard. So like, but I'm taking all stuff that would be like, you know, that would, that would help him in a fight and could look like it's in a fight. So when I cast blindness, deafness, Blindness is him just clashing his swords together and throwing a spark at him. You know, yep. it just looks like, you know, something happened. They can't see for a second and he goes in to try to chop him up. And then later <laughs> on, uh, it was a fair fight and sure, he cut him yeah. down with the, with the expertise. But um, the way that you want to portray them. So for him, he'd be like, he'd portray himself as very honorable, but he probably uses a lot of dirty tricks Yeah, uh, be, because it's all a show. Because it's, all, it's all like, and he sees it, and that's the thing is, he sees it that way. It's a show. Um, <laughs> I, I have to make sure that some people see it, but not too many that can corroborate it or 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 right, uh, right. speak against his <laughs> testament to it. But still, you know. I mean, does he does he know? Now that we're just going to workshop your character for a minute for this game I'm running, sure, like, does he I'm know sure. that uh, it's that he's doing that? Like, is it deliberate on his part, or does he deceived as well? No, no, he's completely aware. Like he, oh, he is okay. the producer of his own reality. So he's got it. <laughs> Listen, he's good got enough to go out and fight. Yeah, yeah, he's got magic on his side, but he portrays himself as just a fighter. And so that's oh, the thing I is see. that's his ace in the hole, right? He plays he's just a duelist. But when he casts Bane on you or vicious mockery and gets you gets in your head and you all of a sudden can't head. hit him, that's kind yeah. of I really like that. Yeah. But that's because to me, I was just trying to be like, how would I be a bard, but want to be a fighter type? Because I am I am more mm. geared towards fighter types. Right. And yeah. so that's yeah. why I was like, oh, this is how you do that. And so, yeah, he's a guild artisan, uh, college of swords. And very cool. This very is cool. the way he was trained. Yeah. 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 No, I, I really I really like that. I think it's going to work well. I love the novelist angle. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll figure out a way to work it into the post apocalyptic wasteland. We can do it. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I, the, the idea of someone who does a whole other thing and just happens to l- be good at fighting, like they didn't know it until they mm-hmm. found themselves in a the situation. They were like, oh yeah, I can keep my cool. I, I stay level headed. I, I don't, I don't, you know, lose it. Like to me, some of the more interesting examples of, of sort of fighters or generals or soldiers are those who are like, up until they went to war, they did something completely different. Right, like they mm-hmm. were doing, they're doing their whole other thing, and then they found themselves in this situation and are now, like, oh yeah, I'm kind of good at this too, and like the idea of a novelist was like, I need, I need to write about something. Now it turns out I'm kind of good at adventuring, you know. <laughs> it's I, really I can go cool, create my own adventures. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, you're, but uh, I, but I love what you're talking about is literally Tom Hanks and Saving Private Ryan, where he's oh, sure. he's the yeah, captain. Yeah. And everybody's like, what did he do to be so good at this? And, you know, spoiler alert, he's a teacher, you know? Right, sure. <laughs> used to keeping a, keeping a bunch of, you know, blockheads in line and <laughs> right teaching line. them how yeah, they're yeah. supposed to, you know, like, but I, like things like that, like, that's the thing is never, never, nothing is too mundane. It, that, yeah. That's why, like, when you're thinking of the warrior, I think one of the main things is what do you fight for? Like, what do you fight for? And, yeah. and, and why do you want to fight for it? And, and yeah, so that's, yeah. that can kind of lead you to what type of warrior you want to be, whether it is a right. more godly, so you're more of a paladin, or you like nature, so you're going to be more of a ranger. Uh, yeah. Or if it's just you want it to come from within, so you become more of a barbarian. Like, like yeah. how, you, how you get to the character at the end is, is, is to me, secondary to the concept so like really digging down like you don't and this isn't like creating an entire backstory before you roll dice but at least like you have to think about some of these these things so you can be like well yeah i want that i want that so i want this so so that's why i'm gonna go with this type of character um but yeah yeah I see what you mean. The the why we fight is kind of uh, an interesting question for uh, for warrior types. Like one of the more unconventional warriors I played recently was my Invisible Sun character, um, Python. She was a warrior. Like I, as I conceived of her, she's like I spells are her weapon, right? Yeah. Like, but in in mentality, in skill set, in approach, 
she's a warrior and and um she's trained her mind to be a prison for war magic and she then you know unleashes on her enemies and in the moment where she's sort of like supposed to be sent to this existential war that's gripping all reality that's tearing apart uh you know the, the place where she lives of saturine she's sent into this mass fugue state where uh you know her and other magic users are, are basically put into a magical coma where they dream up the world we live in and as they awaken come back to this higher reality and the war's over and so like i'd made this character who's very action oriented very like i'm gonna i'm like i'm gonna fight for my home my my you know my very existence like all of my being is bent towards this one task and come back and like it's not there right <laughs> like there's like mm -hmm. it's and and sort of seeing like okay how can i how can i number one play a character that's very combat focused in a game that didn't turn out to have a ton of combat in it which i mean that's to me that's part of the part of the fun of, of role playing is having to like make those two things match up you know uh sometimes it's fun to have a very focused campaign but i think in this case it worked because it forced me to like look as a look when i was playing this character like what can they substitute for this is there a, might this be something that that's going to like drive them forward and seek out a conflict to fight for like right. one of the things that i find tiresome about a lot of the standard warrior concepts like mercenary or or whatever is like well mercenary is very like depending on the time and place there's a lot of different reasons you might become a mercenary it could be because you have nothing back home and someone trained you to fight you're in a foreign land you could easily take whatever you wanted from anyone around you because this is a war-torn country that's sort of like the hundred years war model <laughs> or the mm -hmm. uh what would have become like the condottiere uh, of the yeah. italian renaissance or it could be more like i am a mercenary because it's all volunteers like I, somebody pays me a wage, I go do this thing, then I go home, mm -hmm. I get this job, you know. Um, but I like the warrior that's like, I have to do this. Like, I need a conflict. I have to, to, to get involved. I have to like fight, and uh, you know, maybe it's on behalf of someone else. Maybe it's because I just like that thrill, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that well, yeah, you know, an, an adrenaline action junkie who like dresses it up and in, uh, yeah. in something greater. <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like a human to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> but 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 yeah, you you you're out there uh, you're out there tilting at windmills, so to speak. Like you're, sure, you're yeah, looking for that yeah. next big conflict to 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 pit yourself against, uh, <laughs> and whether it's a internal thing or just or what. Uh, it yeah. doesn't really matter. That's why I like depending on how you how you play a mercenary. Um, like to me, a mercenary is a band aid. Like being a mercenary, mm. that's a band aid over your actual origin story. Oh, yeah, you do oh, this sure, now yeah. because you make money. But there was something yeah. before that you did, and that's how you learn to fight. And now it's just a commodity yeah. that you sell off because right. that thing that you were fighting for is no longer or you messed it up or you lost it doesn't you know like like and again yeah. these are just ways to give your your character concept a little bit more more yeah. oomph, my, you know my favorite one of those is like your side won, and then they told you haha not paying you like they're, you know what i mean like you were part of the winning side and then uh you were and then you got uh you know you got done a raw deal, you know, yeah. not, not very wise of the people who hired you, but, um, you know, that's another matter. Not really. Entirely. That sounds but like you, a good source you... of adventure. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say there's, you're, you're starting out with an initial conflict. Um, right. I like the conceptual space around the relationship between character and, and fighting and how it kind of influences their outlook on life. I think there's the, you know the the person who's who wants to champion a cause there's like the sadist mm -hmm. one of my favorite uh, character archetypes or concepts is like the brawn type mercenary like the pragmatist the all these other idiots around here obeying chivalry what, what rubes you know <laughs> you know yeah. i like that i like coupling that with a more uh like 
joyful and and friendly type demeanor. Um, so one of the things I really like doing with warriors is this ju juxtaposition of 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 concepts and ideas. I think it's easy to play a brooding warrior who's quiet and doesn't do much and is like just a fighter and a killer and, and is pretty shallow. But like, I mean, look, what the fighter and warrior, other warrior types might lack in like depth of embedded narrative or story, like they give you this big blank slate to do whatever you want with. And mm -hmm. I like having ones that are, that are complex like having warriors that are that have a lot of different sides, you know, warriors yeah. who are, uh, you know, have families and and would rather be doing something else. But but mm -hmm. society or circumstance or whatever, they're out there fighting. Uh, I like having warriors who, who who realize they're facing death and danger every time they fight, and so the moments that they're not fighting, they just live it up, right? Like. Yeah. I love a <laughs> like, what am I going to do with all this wealth that I acquired? Well, I'm going to give it to my friends, spend it, throw a big party, you know, booze it up. And like, as I, once I wake up from that bender, I'm going to have to like go on another score, right? I have to like get, get what friends will still talk to me together and go like do some more tomb robbing or monster hunting, you know, <laughs> like. I don't, yeah. That yeah. sounds like a great game to me. Like I'd love to play in that kind of game. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, if you're conceiving, uh, like a, if you have your character concept for a game where maybe your DM's like, well, there's not going to be a lot of combat. There'll be some. It's going to be more social or whatever. Like yeah. that's still a, a place to bring a warrior to bear. Like, oh, yeah. Leveraging the ability to deal out damage and, and violence is in itself a way of 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 interacting with a social game. You are sure. yeah. you are. I mean, showing up fully armed, you are sending a message um, yeah. that yeah, this better stay civil, and we're right. going to keep this civil, nuke. right? Yeah, you brought <laughs> your nuke, and it's just walking around and talking. Like that's right. the thing is like really leaning into that, like and, and sure, just taking sure. just one of the of the social skills. Like in, right. a, in your conception, like it doesn't matter how you do it, but just leveraging that ability, uh, it's still is still a fun way to me to play it because you know yeah. when the shit yeah. goes down, you're still gonna be able to throw down. Sure, sure, especially if you're going for like a Game of Thrones style, you know, oh, yeah. intrigue, politicking sort of. Like I'm really reminded of that scene with Cersei and I think maybe Littlefinger and Cersei's got her guards with her and I forget what she says. But basically, like power is me telling these people to kill you and they will, you know. No, it, it, yeah, no, that's exactly what it was. She's like, kill him. <laughs> and she's like, wait, right as they're putting the sword wait. to his throat and you see that right. look on his face and she's like, power yeah. is power. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was a very chilling scene, and I think that like being a character, playing a character that that is sort of out of their element, right? Like, yeah, I, this is a world of genteel politics and and secrets and and you know, sort of information brokering, being subtle, being uh, you know, maintaining this sort of deception is is necessary. But and then and then this guy sticking out like a sore thumb is here to bring the hammer down if anybody steps out of line. And I think like when you think from a Game of Thrones style intrigue uh, uh, campaign, like that is the point of political power is to command the forces of violence. <laughs> like that's literally feudalism is like your capacity to commit violence, your willingness to your ability to keep it up uh, is the whole reason this thing exists. Uh, everybody else, like 95% of the people around here have to feed you because that's what you're going to do. Like, I don't see how the two don't go hand in hand. And like, even if you're playing in a more refined setting, it's not like the, the dirt and grime dung ages, uh, <laughs> you know, type uh, uh, setting. And it's more uh, civil, and like mm -hmm. playing someone who's still like, I, I can play the game. I, I'm, I'm not out of my element here. Uh, and in fact, if I got really good at this, the fact that I'm a warrior, the fact that that I can command this, uh, you know, either from my own skill at arms or the connections I have, if you're like a, a, you know, a General Maximus from Gladiator type where it's like, yeah, I, this army loves me, <laughs> you know, I could be very political with this army at my beck and call. Um, mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of places for warriors and and fighter types in games of intrigue um precisely because they're a bull at a china shop that's just keeping their keeping it together uh, mm-hmm. and, and one of these days it's 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 gonna hit the fan and and blood's gonna spill um even if that never happens in game just the possibility of it like i i like that when i play these kinds mm-hmm. of characters i like being that uh you know you know in terms of like the place of the narrative that my character has oh definitely yeah 